Hey, my reactors on back with chapter 10, Orphan Pia. Must continue where I left off at. Jenny shrugged. Yeah, I just wish I knew why. I don't know if something happened to her or if she stopped coming because she didn't want us anymore. Pia scandal other orphans in the yard. Which one is your brother? He's not here, Jenny said. After my mother stopped coming for coming, he disappeared. Every day for months, I asked the nuns where he was. Then Mother Joe told me to stop bothering the staff. I still don't know what happened to him. Her heart sweeps in her chest. If they wouldn't tell Jenny where, what happened to her brother, they probably wouldn't tell her even if Callie and Max were there. She almost told Jenny she understood how it feels to miss her brother. Then stop cringing inside. Jenny didn't know what happened to her brother because of someone else, someone else's actions. But whatever happened to Ollie and Max was pure fault. She couldn't tell Jenny or anyone else at the orphanage what she done. They'd think she was a monster and they'd be right. I'm sorry, she said again, because she didn't know what else to say. Then she had another thought. Jenny had been at St. Vincent's for two years. She had to know her, her way around. Do you know if there are any babies over, over here? Of course there are, Jenny said. Pia threw in a silent, deep breath. Where? Jenny shrugged one shoulder. I don't know. I never seen them. Then how do you know they're here? Because sometimes at night I hear them crying. Goosebumps rose on Pia's arm. Before she could ask more questions, a nun opened the door behind them and clapped her hands, making her jump. <clears throat> Come inside, girls, the nun shouted. It's time for supper. The girls on the playground turned away from what they were doing or got to their feet and stared towards the steps, moving in what seemed like a slow motion. As they neared the building, they stared at Pierre with a mixture of curiosity and sympathy. Pierre dropped her eyes and stood. Gigi still asleep in her arms, then moved towards the doorway. The nuns stepped outside, intentionally blocking her way. Put her down, the nurse said. She was the tallest woman Pia had ever seen, with angry eyes burning in her hard bitten face. Her wide chin hung over the neck of her coat, her cough like flesh colored cheese. Huh? Colored cheese. I can curry her, Pia said. She sound she sound asleep. And I suppose you're hoping to steal her supper, the nur the nurse said. Pia shook her head. No, I, without warning the nun yank, without warning the young yank Gigi from Pia's arm, then set her on her feet and pushed her into the building, stumbling and disoriented. What's your name, girl? She said to Pia. Pia, Pia what? Pia Lange. Well, Miss Lange, from now on, you'll do as you're told. Trust me when I say it. It will make your time here a little more pleasant. Pia glanced at Jenny, who shook her head over so sight ever so slightly in warning. Pia looked back at the, the nun. Yes, ma'am, she said. Yes, Sister Ernestine, the nurse corrected her. Yes, Sister Ernestine, Pia repeated. Sister Ernestine gave her another scold, then turned on her heels and went back inside to wait. The girls lined up against one wall, silent and obedient, all facing the same way, their eyes straight ahead. Sister Ernestine and two other nuns split them into three groups. Then Sister Ernestine took a ladder from one of the other nuns and ordered the first group, including Pia and Jenny, to follow her. Together they shuffled along the dim hole. Sister Ernestine shadowed ma marching along the ceiling like a giant bat. At the end of the hall, they clambered down a steps, a steep set of wooden steps. Planting their head, planting their hands on the wall to keep from tumbling forward. Where are we going, Pia whispered to Jenny. Who was t who was two girls in front of her? In the dining area, Jenny whispered back. In the cellar, shh, Jenny hissed over her shoulders. At the bottom of the steps, they passed a coal bin as big as a trolley. They entered a long, narrow room with do it duck work and rusty pipes. 
one of the left of the floor ceiling. Something that looked like wet soup dripped down the brick walls and the wooden floors were scuffled and worn. The air smelled like spoiled milk and cabbage. Metal bowls and spoons lined a long table surrounded by wooden stools. The girl sat down in an orderly fashion, peered next to Jenny, then waited silently while a sweaty-faced nun ladled something that looked like runny stew into their bowls. Brown cloths of stew dripped from the ha from the ladle onto the floor. The stools, the tables, the girls' shoulders and heads. No one seemed to notice. Bless us, O oh Lord, for these for these thy gifts which we are about to receive from the bounty through Christ, our Lord, Amen. The sweaty face now repeated over and over. Each girl said Amen after their bowls was filled. And I'll be back with the continuation of here, chapter 10. Why am I back?